So if your studio is like our studio, we provide tools for you. We found it was a lot easier to just provide the basic tools needed to make pottery for beginners. This way you don't have to commit by buying your own set and we also tend to steal your tools as we're showing you how to do things. So we provide your basic tools, pin tools, wood tools, ribs, and some other interesting tools like hole borers slash hole punchers, pot lifters, knives, sponges, etc. There's a couple of different ways to keep our tools in tip top shape. Number one, <clears throat> our pin tools. If we do wash them after each use, it's amazing how clean they stay. But most important tool that I find gets ruined the most is the wood tool. Very often, um, what makes a wood tool a great tool to work with is if your angle is straight and your point is pointing. So we find that a lot of people tend to clean their backs with a wood tool. This is not best practices. Um, what we do suggest you use is this wooden plate rib. We tend to not uh, use this very often when we're throwing pots. So it's actually pretty great to just be able to get that extra clay off of your bat using the flat edge. This will help you protect your wood tool as you are trimming your pots at the end of throwing them. We also do not use our wood tool on the wheel to clean off of our clean our wheel, especially not the point. If you really have to, make sure that it's angled so that it is not affecting the point or this edge right here. Our next tool I'm gonna to talk about is the sponge tool. So um, we use this round sponge to clean the bottom of our pots, keep our pot wet, and I actually throw with these sponges as well. They hold just enough moisture compared to a regular kitchen sponge, but they are more expensive than your average kitchen sponge. And what happens to those sponges? This happens, or this happens, or this happens. Gross. This doesn't hold anything. Now, why did this happen? One of two reasons, probably. At one point, somebody used their sponge to clean their bat. This is masonite and there's grog in the clay. So the grog will actually eat away at the sponge as we're cleaning it. Not a good practice. The other way that we can ruin our sponge tool is by trying to clean our wheel with the small sponge tool. So the problem with that, not only does the grog eat away at the clay, but if you're a person who uses bats, these pins right here, if the bat isn't on there, will actually destroy the, spit, the sponge as well. Use larger sponges like car washing sponges to clean your wheel, especially under here. This one is not a cleaning sponge. Not sure about you guys, but we could never find a wire tool around here. We try and keep them behind the wheels so in case you forget to bring it with you, you know there's one right behind you. But then when we wash them at the sink, we tend to just pile them all on one spot. The problem with this is that the wire tools will get kinked. And once you have this kink in there, you're likely to actually have it fray. And once it frays, means bloody fingers when you go to clean off your wheel. So try and keep your wire tools each on its own separate spot. If you are using wire tools that are made from fishing line, be super careful. Those wire tools are not meant to, block, to cut clay off of your block. It's meant strictly to get the thinnest amount of waste when you wire it off of your wheel. But keep those separate as well. They may not kink the same way, but they do tend to not.